So I'd like to start off by uh, introducing myself. My name is Nigel Chambers, owner of Bitco Belt Media. Emerson Moore, it's a pleasure to talk to you today. Hey, how are you? Good to meet you. Good, good. How you feeling? Excited? <laughs> this is a big deal. You're a directorial, <laughs> written, and producer, feature, feature length de debut. Yeah. Hey, what's up? <laughs> You're a crazy man. You, you took you just wore all the hats on the first one, but you did it. Congratulations. Oh, no, I focused on um, writing and directing on this film, but uh, I had the had developed it from early on, so yeah. just kind of stuck around for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the opportunity to check out this film, it's like I was being stalked because these are my favorite type of film, but I have to kind of address what seems to be a very popular question within the horror community, mm -hmm. the subgenre. Where do you kind of categorize this film in terms of subgenres in horror? Boy, you know, I, I think this film focuses on a psychological thriller aspect um, heavily. Uh, there's also been some comparisons like Lost, I've heard. Um, like, whoa, this is kind of feeling that way, which I was like, wasn't intentional at the beginning to have that vibe, but I'll take it because Lost is pretty dope. Um, another comparison I've heard was like Cube. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen that where, you know, they wake up in this cube and, and all that. Take that as well. I think that's amazing. Some of the films mm -hmm. that influenced me would be like Alien. That's another one uh, that I love. You have this small group of people trapped in a single location and something's trying to get them. So yeah. for me, you know, and my co-writers, we always just were drawn to like the idea of like, what if you had these people trapped in a wide open space? Mm -hmm. That's just weird in and of itself. Yeah. But the cornfield's wide and expanse and endless, but then it's also claustrophobic and kind of messed up because when you get up in that corn, it's, it's kind of a mess. So. Yeah. I, I think now this ruined it. I'm never want to be in a cornfield at all. There was a couple other movies before this that I was like, nah, maybe, but this was absolutely the icing of the cake. Absolutely yeah. never, ever want to be in a cornfield by any stretch of means. <laughs> like I'd rather be trapped yeah. in the elevator, I think, at this point. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited for people to see it. I think there's, you know, there's some twists and turns. And yeah. if you, you really, if you, maybe if you take notes, you, you figure it out at the end, like what's going on. So yeah, it's fun. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I uh, reached out to uh, a good friend of mine, a very prominent person I, I feel in the horror community. And I said, well, where would you kind of classify a film like this? And they said a death game subgenre. And I said, I agree. I, I Something that I would have went with as well, too. Um, another couple of films that kind of jump out to mind with me is Escape Room recently. Um, mm -hmm. And you can even go as far as saying Saul minus the porn aspect of it. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's it's a very popular genre in its own. I think a lot of people are going to like it. And I do like the, the the mystery aspect, the fact that it's not just brainless slashing going on, but you actually do have to be invested yeah. and you actually do have to take clues and whatnot. We're going to talk just a little bit about that. Um, mm -hmm. Another thing about this film, and, and obviously because I, I'm trying to, you know, bring my audience who, who are fans of mine who understand the things I am in, into, this is why I said I felt like I, I was real creeped out in this opportunity of, of asking to want to watch this film. My favorite video game is Dead by Daylight. And it's exactly the same concept. Four survivors put on any map and you and based on how the game is done, you're working with other three people online. So you don't really know them. So there's that aspect. And then there's oh, a killer but... on the map. And, if, oh, and, you, wow. and you can't do anything but defend yourself. You don't have powers. You don't have, which, you know, there's a super supernatural element or superhuman element to this. But it's the same concept of survival. And thus, with that being such a popular game, games like that, games like uh, Friday the 13th, these games are popular, which it just seems like this film is this perfect timing. And I think it's going to drive a lot of success and a lot of I, people into it. I I'd never heard of that game, but it sounds badass. <laughs> yeah, and they <laughs> use popular fun. they they use popular um um you know popular uh prominent and killers and stuff within the community. So like yeah, it's it's oh, it's a good fun. time. So, um, cool. but go, going back into this first, I, you know, I gotta ask you this cash that you have here. Now this 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 is this is the thing about horror films that I love. I love when it's a bunch of people you don't know because you kind of just don't know how to kind of you know categorize who's kind of safe and who's not. 
But I love in this film with such prominent names involved, but no one was safe. Uh, could, you, <laughs> could, you, could you talk a little bit about your casting and knowing who was going to play what roles upon being uh, signed on? Yeah, kill them all, right? Um, <laughs> it was, uh, you know, I was really blessed with the cast that I got um, for the film. You know, Theo and I go back. We had done a movie previously um, that I was a producer on. And, you know, we connected. He'd read it early on and he'd been super busy, um, you know, with like Army of the Dead and these different things that he was up to. And then, you know, the pandemic hit. Yeah. And I was, we were getting ready to, to put this together pre pandemic. And I was like, oh man, when that went down, I was like, there's no way we're getting this done. And then <laughs> Theo and I were chatting and this window opened up in, in, um, outside Toronto and you know my producing partners and we just figured it out and next thing you know um, things were moving rather quickly and um, connections were made Shane got the script read it we zoomed the next day and that was an immediate like I knew this is Ryan and and he was super excited and loved the the project as well uh, next I spoke with Jordan I think I talked to her for five minutes and I knew she was Sam. So that was done. Tahira and I got on a call, did the same exact response. Um, Elena and, and Julian, the same. And uh, the big piece of it was everybody was willing to get on a plane during that crazy time. So, right. you know, we're in September of 2020 and we all descend upon, you know, this hotel outside Toronto <laughs> in this bubble for a couple of weeks. Yeah, Everybody's yeah, yeah. trapped. I'm getting all the rehearsal time I want and everybody's fantastic. And, you know, we spent the next, you know, months in our little bubble, just going to a cornfield and back to the hotel. So <laughs> I got really lucky, you know, with having such a talented and fun cast to work with. And we're all close to this day, you know, yeah. our group, our group texts are still in operation, which that's yeah. really rare on a yeah, film. Dude. It's yeah. like checking out, see ya. Yeah. But, yeah, it's great. It's really great. That's awesome. Speaks a lot about your character, and you're you're entirely right. And um, you know, you all are going to have a lot to talk about in, in a couple of days once this release. Uh, seeing how people take to it, and I, I really think people are going to enjoy it. I I uh, got a chance to watch it twice, and I'm still just thinking about certain elements of it. And I don't want to spoil certain things, but I do. Yeah, wanna, right? I want to. I want to. I want to tap your mind just a little bit. Sure. One other thing about films like this is. There's a very steady convention with the makeup down. And I feel with these films is that you tend to want to leave them open-ended because you want to leave things on the table because you want to open up and invite for future possibilities. Mm. So I'm jumping the gun just really quickly. Have you thought about expanding this very, uh, or shall we say, open world of endless questions for the viewers at this point? Yeah, there's a there, there's there's definitely a universe for this film. It 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 has a storyline. It goes certain places, and the answers that you're looking for at the end are there. You just need to find them. They're there. Yeah, Trust me. they're yeah. very much there. Look yeah. at what the era the items are from. That's a hint. Okay. Um, look at what they interact with, and listen to what a couple of the characters are saying because they're going to tell you. They'll tell you, and then. Hmm. Clearly at the end, listen to what's on the what's being said. Right, right. There you go. And you might right. wanna you might wanna pause it. <laughs> I definitely went back a few times. There was a couple of words I wasn't able to make out, but the biggest thing that stuck out to me was like like the what, what was what did I write Don't down to say? Say it. Don't you say it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you what, I, right here and now, I, I promise I'll come back. All right. We'll talk about it together after May 6th, and I will tell you everything you want to know. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Um, uh, you know, something you mentioned, I definitely want to give you a props about it, is getting this done during the pandemic. I've been a huge advocate for pandemic films. Um, it's a huge challenge. Um, it is not a guarantee that we're supposed to get this type of entertainment as consumers of, of film and media. Um, and yeah. the fact that you, shall we say, create the illusion that this film is much bigger than what it is. 
um, just as a testament to your hard work um, and doing it in, 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 in Canada, which we know had huge restrictions, uh, probably still to this day, yeah. um, you know, it's definitely just hats off to getting this done. Um, I would love to know, was there any previous draft to this film that was beyond pandemic reaches? Like, was there more folks? Was it mo more than one locations? Any of that source ever coming, uh, uh, was ever part of the or original script possibly? Yeah, um, you know, I I, I kind of uh, I had done some changes to the script definitely to accommodate uh, being in a pandemic um, and and having only that location to work with. But I don't feel like it affected the story and, and what the story was at all. Um, and you know, the other challenges we faced were, you know, I shot this film single camera, <laughs> and I shot with a very small crew. Um, mm -hmm. And we kept things as small as possible so that we could make it through this process while while facing the challenges of being in a pandemic. You know, the bigger the bigger the crew, the bigger the risk, the bigger the everything, the bigger the risk. So, yeah. you know, we were able to make it through um, without any stoppages, uh, which was great. And you know, that's just a kudos to our COVID folks and you know uh, all the safety measures they had set up. Which, you know, we're one of the only films to shoot. And, and at that time, I think we were one of the first. So mm. all of these protocols weren't in place. We had to kind of invent them and then yeah. get approvals. So, yeah. you know, it was a lot of fun. And man, I do not miss that giant swab right down the nose. <laughs> and we were doing the old school one. Oh, yeah. With like, like a foot long, like it looked like a magic trick. Right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to touch your brain. <laughs> if you dig around. If you dig around on uh, on Instagram with some of my cast and 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 stuff, you'll find some of the videos. They're hilarious. It's like at one point, Shane would just put his up, and they were just oh, it's just the craziest thing. It looked like we were, you know, doing some VFX on it, but it was pretty <laughs> five days a week, all day long. Let's go. Uh, we appreciate it because uh, you know even in these very dark and strange times, you know you was able to put out an amazing product. Now I, I, I'm I'm gonna end with this question because again, sure. yeah, we, we definitely have to do this again because I have very sophisticated questions that I keep <laughs> like I keep looking at like my notes and keep saying, "Can don't bring that up, don't bring it up." But you did <laughs> mention the time, uh -huh. and because I'm gonna give a clue by the time, but also because I mentioned earlier in this interview about there being sort of a super soldier enhanced human. You can even maybe say supernatural, whatever you want to call it folks, but it's very much still a human that is enhanced in this film at hmm. some point. Or is it a red herring? I don't know. I could do the, <laughs> the hum emoji. <laughs> oh no. Hmm. <laughs> There might be something at play there. That could be something, you know. Again, look at the items when they're from. What yeah. They're from. yeah. You get a nice good shot of like that gun or the or the knife. Yeah. You know? Or that weird ass, like, what are those matches in? You yeah. know, he opens up. What is that thing? You know? <laughs> Where what era is that from? You know, find yeah. it all out. I'm giving huge clues right yes. now. Yes. Yeah, I haven't done this for anyone else. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. There you go. Well, that means it's time for us to go because folks now have to watch this. You have to go watch the film. You done got all the tools you needed, not only to survive, but to solve the game. Emerson, yeah. it's been a pleasure to talk to you, buddy. And I wish you nothing but success. And as you said, the seat's open. So let's do it again very soon. All right. You too, man. Have a great day. All right, buddy. Thank you so much. And everybody, thank you so much for tuning in for this interview. Cheers.